In section 5.2 of the 2013 IPCC report, this question was posed. It seems to get to the heart of the climate change debate. We know the climate is changing, but is this unusual or not? This is the answer provided by the IPCC. It says it is unusual, but qualifies this conclusion by saying it is unusual in the context of centennial scale variations that have occurred over the last 2,000 years. These qualifications result in the answer not really getting to the heart of the matter in the same way the question did. To provide a more comprehensive answer, this video will widen the scope to take in three complementary queries. Just how unusual is it for sea levels to rise at all? Just how unusual is the current sea level? How unusual is the current rate of change? To answer these questions, we will adopt an approach put forward by the IPCC. It says we should study past climate variations if we are to understand modern climate change. It therefore recommends that these periods should be used for comparison with modern climate change. We will adopt this approach with one minor modification rather than confining ourselves to the Holocene years of 5000 to 6000 we will use all of the Holocene period as a basis for comparison. Before going into our analysis, we should spend a couple of minutes looking at the rationale behind the selection of these time intervals. This chart that should be read from right to left maps out cycles of warmer and colder periods that can be detected dating back to at least 5.3 million years ago. It starts a trend that continues to modern times. In fact, the Earth had been cooling from around 50 million years ago, which marks the point where the supercontinent Pangaea had separated to form the continents much as they are today. The cycles continued through the Pliocene climatic optimum. This subperiod, known as the mid Pliocene, is a sound basis for comparison to modern climate change, as the continents and oceans were close to the present structure, while the climate was slightly warmer than today. The cycles of warmer and cooler periods continued with a trend to get ever cooler, eventually resulting in the start of the Quaternary Ice Age 2.6 million years ago. It was at this time that the present pattern of glacial and interglacial cyclical events set in. For the next 1.8 million years, the cycles continued with a periodicity of around 41,000 years, which corresponds to the Milankovitch cycle of obliquity. The cycles have taken place over the past 800,000 years, but with a significant change. At around 800,000 years ago, the cycles changed to a periodicity of 100,000 years. This diagram charts the cycles over the past 800,000 years. The Emean period is at this point. The IPCC identifies the Emean interval 
as a suitable source for comparison with modern climate change, as the temperature was similar to that of today. The Emian also has the value of being the most recent interglacial prior to the current Holocene period. Our current interglacial period is generally accepted as starting 11,500 years ago. We are now ready to look at whether it is unusual for sea levels to rise. We will start by making a general point about the Holocene interglacial period in which we now live. This recent study highlights that the fundamental concept of an interglacial is that of low ice volume and higher sea levels. The IPCC also recognises that sea level fluctuations are not unusual and presents this chart of rises in sea levels going back 22,000 years. We have seen this chart before. It charts sea levels over the past 800,000 years. It clearly shows that sea levels go down in glacial periods and rise in interglacials. This pattern has been repeated for the past 5.3 million years. There is thus overwhelming evidence that sea levels rise and fall quite naturally. So we must conclude it is not unusual for sea levels to rise. We can now address just how unusual is the current sea level. We start with the mid-Pliocene. During the mid-Pliocene period, sea levels were up to 20 metres above present levels. During the three million years prior to the mid-Pliocene, sea levels had exceeded the present level by around 5 metres. During the last interglacial, sea levels were between 6 and 10 metres higher than present. And this was for a period of several thousand years. Coming to the present Holocene period, sea levels have been at or near to the current level for a period of 4,000 years. Given these multiple examples of equivalent and much higher sea levels over extended periods of time, we must conclude the current sea level is not unusual. We will now assess how unusual is the present rate of sea level change. In order not to compare apples to pears, we will use the IPCC quoted rate of change. This will be our basis for comparison. The rate quoted is 1.7 millimeters per year. For later comparison, this is equivalent to 1.7 meters per thousand years. It is beyond doubt that the current rate of sea level change has been exceeded on many occasions in the past. This was acknowledged by the IPCC as part of its answer to the original question, when it accepted that sea level changes have risen at much faster rates, of for example 10 to 15 millimetres per year, which is six to nine times faster than the current rate. However, in the view of the IPCC, 
Such rates normally occur during the transition from a full glacial period to an interglacial period. If we look at our selected time period of the last interglacial, we also find there significantly faster rates than current. The IPCC has high confidence, in fact, that the current rates of change were exceeded over several periods of up to 1,000 years duration. It provides further examples of rates of change that far exceed current levels. At 20,000 years ago, when the last glacial was transitioning to the Holocene interglacial, a rise of 10 metres per thousand years occurred. From around 14,000 years ago, an approximate increase of 60 metres per thousand years took place. During the Holocene itself, from 9.5 thousand years ago to 8,000 years ago, the rate of sea level change did exceed the present rate. It was around seven times greater. It should also be noted that sea levels were consistently rising from 7,000 years ago to 3,000 years ago although at a lesser rate than current. We are not quite ready to answer the question, but we can look at an interim assessment. To reach a final conclusion, we need to go back to the assessment made by the IPCC. It declares that the current rate of change is unusual compared to the last 2,000 years. A couple of questions come to mind. What is the significance of the 2,000 years? And what was the period used to calculate the rate of change. The period used for the calculation turns out to be just over 100 years. As to the pertinence of the past 2000 years, the IPCC publishes two graphs that are relevant. This chart shows little, if any, increase in sea levels from 1700 to 1850, but then an increase from 1850 to the present time. This chart shows sea levels since 6,000 years ago. You can see that sea levels were steadily rising from 6,000 years ago to 2,000 years ago. Then, from 2,000 years ago, the rise in sea levels flattens. This part of the graph indicates the period used by the IPCC to calculate the rate of change. I leave it to you to decide just how meaningful is this period as a comparison to the last 2,000 years. It seems a comparison to the past 6,000 years would be more meaningful. Given this last piece of information, we can now come to a firm conclusion. The current sea level rate of change is not unusual. But I will leave the final word with the IPCC. The Little Ice Age ended in 1850. The IPCC itself puts forward the idea that recent climate changes could be a natural recovery from that period. 
it recognises that the Little Ice Age was of comparable magnitude to modern climate change, and thus a correction in sea levels is to be expected, as are other changes to the climate. This IPCC graph supports the notion that the modern sea level rise started at the termination of the Little Ice Age. There is one more point to make. This has to do with the calculation of the rate of change and how it is used as a basis for comparison. In the context of the Holocene interglacial period, this comparative period of 109 years is extremely short. We leave the relevance of that point to the IPCC.